This is a piece of uranium ore or a pitch blender. Sometimes people ask me if it can really be that dangerous because uranium is an alpha emitter. But that is only part of the truth because um, uranium does not decay into nothing. But if you take a look at the decay chain, that's actually well, most of it in uh, pitch blender ore is uranium 238. Only 0.7% is uranium 235. So we'll have a look at that later, but let's first focus on uranium 238. It decays into thorium by emitting an alpha particle, which can be shielded by even a piece of paper, as you know. But it decays into thorium 234, which is again radioactive, and decays by emitting a beta particle and so on. We have a lot of nucleates here that emit either alpha or beta radiation. But also the problem is that sometimes the daughter nucleus, the decay product, is in an excited state. The excitation energy will actually have to be given off using a quantum po packet of energy and that is a gamma ray. And the thing is um, the penetration power which is which equals to um, the electron volts, the energy that this quantum packet of energy has is different for the different nucleids. Downwards from radium on, the gamma rays have a very high penetrating power and thus they can hardly be shielded. The higher the energy of the particle or electromagnetic wave, the harder it is to shield. That goes for any radiation, so if there's a very weak beta particle, it can be shielded easier, much easier than a very hard and thus penetrating beta particle. These are just the most common ways for the atoms to decay, by the way. Uranium, for example, can spontaneously fission as well. So um, the atom will split and neutrons will be emitted and yeah, it will become a different, different nuclei than if uranium-238 would undergo an alpha decay. But um, that is highly unlikely, and there's different probabilities for all the nucleates down this chart. Um, and that's really too much for this short educational video, so if you want to know more about that, just Google for nuclei chart and isotope browsers and stuff like that. That will tell you more about it. But enough talking, let's actually look at the numbers. This is my Gamma Scout. It's going off because it is close to the little piece of pitch blender there in the back and it has different shields. This one is a thick aluminium slice. It is the gamma shield or gamma only shield. And with this thing in place only very highly penetrating rays like gamma rays or very hard beaters can get through. Then you can switch it over to beta and gamma which you can see here is just a thinner slice of aluminium. Can you see it like that? I'm not sure. You can see this one is thicker. And then there's the alpha window, which is basically the Geiger Miller tube with a special silicate or something um, window exposed, which will let alpha radiation penetrate it. So let us first of all measure gamma radiation only. You can see it. We have about 45, 48, 50. Still going up. And you can see we have about 50 microsieverts of gamma radiation with that shield in place. And now I will try not to move the dosimeter, but switch over to beta and gamma. And as you can immediately hear, there's a lot more going on. So we have like... Yeah, about 250 to 300. Yeah, it's closing to nearing uh, 300 microsieverts now, 297 and 295, staying around that area. Now let's switch over to alpha. And 
you can see we're reaching over 300 microsieverts. We are at 20 now. Still going up a bit. Yeah, it's just random, but about 320 or just about that. There's a switch back. You can see, well, there's quite a lot of very penetrating radiation. But the most is actually uh, semi-penetrating radiation, such as beta rays or softer gamma rays. And the alpha radiation is actually not that much. So, to sum it up, uranium is indeed an alpha emitter, but the daughter nucleids emit alpha and beta rays of different penetrating powers, different energy levels, and there's also a lot of gamma radiation being emitted by the excited state daughter nucleids, and um, the gamma ray penetrating power really differs a lot for the different daughter nucleids as well. So if you want to know more about this, check out nuclei charts and isotope browsers. Just Google for that. Here's another close look at the beautiful blisters of this little pitch blender. And that concludes the video. Thanks for watching.